Welcome to another episode of the Miles Offside Podcast, where we talk a little bit of football and a whole lot of nonsense. My name is Oscar Puente, also known as the only host who will be in a good mood this week, and I have the absolute pleasure of being joined by my co-hosts Chuck, Bailey, and Ian Stimson. Why would I not be in a good mood? Uh, FPL. All you've been doing is crying all weekend about your FPL. <laughs> oh, right, okay, that, that's all I've been doing. Peter Brabeet, MK Dons, the plastic. Oh, there we go. Okay, fuck the you Dons. Know, I know that uh, one. You know, so that that's happy. And, and Madison scored two, rescuing, not really rescuing, but, you know, attempting to rescue. He's thrown a life jacket out to the worst ga- uh, game week I've probably ever had. So, yeah. Yeah, it definitely but, sounds like you're in a real good mood. <laughs> <laughs> super good, super good. This stupid fucking game and this fucking thing. <laughs> Worst fucking thing ever, but it's fine. I'm fine. What are you talking I'm about? Really, I'm fine. Yeah, it's, it's been up and down. It's been up and down. I guess less sounds like Leicester are winning then. Yeah, three, it's 3-0 three at half time. Oof. Uh, R.I.P. Enfo. <laughs> yeah, Christ. it does seem like it. They've got to get their shit together fast. We are we are recording Monday afternoon, so as of the time of recording, it's like halftime in that game, probably. I don't know. I literally just got home from work like two seconds ago. I'm still wearing my shoes. So Yeah, they've just kicked off in the second half. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Chuck, how are you? You alive there, bud? You doing okay? Yeah, fine. FPL went well for you this week, right? No. No, I thought you did like a, didn't you have the armband on someone who scored a bajillion goals or something? Yeah, but it doesn't matter unless you owned at least five players who scored a bajillion goals. The game week average is like 70 points, so. <laughs> it's one of them weeks, yeah. We can do FPL, we can do the top 10, we didn't do it last week. The Mophead League in, oh, three-way, why are you always all drawing, for fuck's sake? Um, a three-way tie in eighth is b- relegated, is that a Brentford thing? Uh, Jake Kiefer, uh, Chris Smith, Chicken Tigger Mo Salah, and Yas, Yash Mishra, Eager Egan. Uh, Baby Jota, Gabriel Pedalosa in 7th, Lynn Hamer, Atletico Bourneville in 6th, Pad Fall, Fluffy Nutkins in 5th, uh, Safira Gold! Gold! F-T-I-D-F-C, uh, question mark, Vin Lee, um, what, uh, yeah. Uh, Owen Carr, Wee's Wanderers in 2nd place, and top spot for now, uh, after shocking errors in judgment, my little Tony, Sam Danby, who uh, put the armband on Kane for no real reason and then forgot to change it to Erling Haaland. He missed the deadline, Cost yeah. himself 17 points, uh, and he would have been in about the top 5k in the world. Never mind. He said he, he was top 5k. If he'd have done that, it'd have been top 500. As it is, he's down to top 15k. My heart fucking bleeds for him. Wow, wow. Uh, fucking <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, for the first time all season, all three of us are at the time of recording in the top 10 of the Patreon League. <laughs> How many are in the Patreon League? M- more than 10. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't think top 10 is anything to crow about. Yeah, if you're joining us for the first time, thank you. We're very happy to have you. We are one American and two Brits, and we try to talk about the Premier League, but often get distracted. If you're back, great. We love you. We appreciate it. Leave us a review. Five stars. Um, Patreon.com slash milesoffsidepod. And join us on the Slack, which is a positively wonderful little corner of the internet. Um, And other good stuff. Potentially uh, trick yourself into getting a million socks for lots of money. Lots of money. Before we get into the fixtures, we did want to say our our condolences go out to anyone, uh, any listeners that we have in, that may have been affected by the stadium uh, riot, I guess, for lack of a better word, that happened in Indonesia. Um, If you have not read up on that yet, go ahead and look that up. We're not doing news these days so much anymore, but there was a, a really terrible, terrible tragedy that happened and, um, and a lot of people uh, were hurt and a lot of people died. Um, and it's one of the saddest stories I can remember in sports, in soccer, like maybe in my life. It's very, very sad, very upsetting. So anyone who maybe, uh, has been affected by this, whether it's triggering it, other sort of things in you that have come up from your past or you were directly affected by it, um, our deepest, deepest condolences go out because it is, it is truly just like a tragic and horrible thing that happened. But, Moving on from there, we will get to the fixtures. It's been a while since we talked about soccer, gentlemen. Hey, we did the important, most important story in world football last week, okay? Let's give it the respect it deserves. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can cast your minds back all the way back, we'll start with the rundown of fixtures since the last time we talked about soccer, and that was on September 3rd. Oh, Jesus. 2020. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> Ian just shit a brick. <laughs> <laughs> 
I really need to get to bed at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, we're, we're going to October 1st. Uh, starting off with the big North London Derby. Uh, shit team we won't mention. Three. Shit team we will mention called Spurs 1. 2.6 <laughs> to 1.5 on the XG. Um, I am still actively refusing to talk about Arsenal other than to say fuck Mikel Arteta and fuck all fans that are at all doubling down on the situation with the player uh, who will not be named, who probably uh, did, almost certainly did, all sorts of terrible things. Um, no, but it did. It might be relevant to talk one, about Spurs. One of them did, but due to a technicality and law change, they couldn't do anything about. So did, won, but can't have anything done about it. And the, the bail has been extended today for the other two. So um, That's all we need to say about Arsenal other than a big old middle finger at them. Uh, I hope they get relegated somehow, despite having a good run of form so far. Uh, but Spurs, what up with Spurs? Aren't they good? Aren't we supposed to be talking about how good they are? Conte, right? Kane's back and, and Sonny and Richarlison. I, I mean, and... they're third in the league, you know. This is the thing. They're coming, they're coming up. It's, it's, it was who they were coming up against, I think, because they, they Tottenham let let the other team dominate them, didn't they? And that was that that was what happened. And then Royal did what he did, and uh, that was it. That was that was game over after that because they weren't they hadn't really been in the game anyway. So it was a bit of a bit of a needless self destruction that because it was a it was a clear red. I think anyone who says it wasn't a red is talking absolute absolute nonsense. You can't <laughs> apart from anything else. It was how late it was. He had no chance of getting the ball whatsoever, so you can't just then stick your studs above someone's ankle. It just that's, that's is that against the rules? Well, it it is, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, right. I saw go. some people giving it the uh, well, that's a that's a soft red, and he's like, seriously, that's not a soft <laughs> red. That is a clear red. Um, but anyway, yeah, that, and that's that's what Tottenham are doing there occasionally this season. It's you never know which Tottenham's going to turn up, and it's we've said that if they're if they're Attacking forces click. They're they're going to be incredibly fun to watch going forward. But it it just didn't seem to happen. It just seemed very lazy in their tr- in their attempts to get the ball back and very and quite lazy in possession. It just didn't seem to click at all. I don't really know what's going on with them occasionally because then other times they'll blow teams away. Last time I said Spurs, where where are the scoring Spurs? They dunked six on Leicester. Like, admittedly, it's Leicester, but, you know, like, they, they did that. And then they go into this game and just don't really... Hmm. Uninspiring. Yeah, in their last five, they have three wins, a draw, and a loss. So this is the one loss. Um, okay. They've been pretty good, I think that's fair to say. But, yeah, they are kind of up and down. I don't have any particular insight into Spurs or what it is that makes them so... Uh, Spursy. Susceptible to um, <laughs> one specific thing going wrong. Um, other than, yeah, as, as you say, Chuck, they are Spurs. So that is just the nature of the game with them. But much ado about nothing with the loss here, right? It's just because it's a high profile match, but like they're probably fine. They're probably going to finish around, in and around First the top four. First loss of the season so far. So, you know, there's it's still very many, many early days. And they are fifth on XGD per 90, uh, level with Brighton. Um, somehow Newcastle are above Liverpool into the top five in that one. That's going to, that's going to normalize after a bit, but, uh, Spurs seem fine. Spurs seem fine. So if you're a Spurs fan and you're kind of like flipping out, yes, it sucks to lose a major match like this, such a big rival, um, type game. Uh, and you want to beat good teams. You don't want to just beat down on bad teams, but at the end of the day, this is the thing. I think when I'm saying they're up and down, it's just that these are the games they need to be winning if they're going to kick on and be title contenders now obviously we're not talking about that at the minute because man city are just you know obliterating everyone but we're getting to a situation where you know arsenal look like they're better than before liverpool should correct at some point you assume they're still they're still stats aren't terrible they're still top four stats wise aren't they yeah or or close Um, level with newcastle obviously newcastle are going to buy their way into that top four within a season or two, you would have thought. You know, what I'm saying is things are could get mixed up, you know, quite soon. Not for not until Holland like retires, maybe. He needs to calm down yeah. at the minute. A hat trick a game seems a little unreasonable if you ask me. Maybe a brace a game I could stand three by. Three home hat tricks in a row. Eight games <laughs> to get to three Premier League hat tricks. The next fastest is Michael Owen on forty eight games. <laughs> He is only eight <laughs> goals off of the golden boot from last season. There are still 30 games <laughs> yeah. left to play. He's on pace for 70-ish goals <laughs> this season. 
Um, shall we jump ahead to City since we since we brought them up and there's not much insight to be gained from this match really. It's it's Manchester City six, Manchester United three, Man City two point nine to Man United one point five. So the the scoreline is you know massively flattering to City, but then again, XG doesn't know that it's Holland and Holland should. Um, get there should be a variable in the system for Erling Holland where it adds 0.5 xG to every shot. Uh, in my opinion, um, one of my favorite Holland stats. It's a bit old at this point, but I forgot to mention it. He took a penalty and it actually increased the average shot distance because his average shot distance had been closer than the penalty area up to that point. And this was like that. a couple of games ago. <laughs> That's phenomenal. He's so good. He's so fucking good. Foden though also got a hat trick. Um, he, after some criticism of him not being in the England team, but you know players play different in different systems when they aren't playing for a fucking garbage donkey of a manager, um, and they come and play for Pep. <laughs> oh, you're you're fully out on Southgate. I've never now. liked Southgate. I've never liked Southgate. It's just that results <laughs> tint, tint things. It is the exact same. Yeah. I had Roy Hodgson for four years. Everyone leave me alone. But, you know, he comes and plays at Pep, and Pep knows what he's doing, and score many goals, do great. Yep, they are on pace for 138 goals. Um, <laughs> honestly, like, Chelsea have nothing to play for this season. Really, like, I mean, they're, they're playing for top four, right? But, like, not anything that's exciting um, or that, like, normally I would get, get myself all worked up about. Uh, so I'm just rooting for City to just fucking destroy everyone. Like, I want to see them score 130 goals this season. I want to see Holland get 40 goals this season. Those are genuinely in play, those numbers. Um, maybe 130, like, is an unreasonable amount of goals to expect a team to score. But, like, look at them. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, they didn't get out of second gear in this game because they didn't fucking have to. It was it was mad the amount of space that Man United were willing to give them. Yeah, really dumb. Um, but at the same time, having De Bruyne to Holland is a cheat code. Mm. Like that's yeah, just uh, like no of one's course, stopping that. But you've got you've got to try. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I accept what you're saying, but you, you really have to try. This isn't as, as well. This isn't Enfo taking on Man City, where you go, you you could say, fair enough, Forest, put ten men behind the ball and just do your best to like blast it out. This is Man United, but there was no, there, there was no effort. Did you just all. did you just pundit it? This is Man United. Did you really just this is Man United? This. Yeah, they haven't well, been this Man United in, like, since before this podcast existed, frankly. What I'm saying is, this isn't a team that is a relegation candidate. Yes, this is a is. team that is, until re- very recently, <laughs> until very recently, <laughs> always in the Champions League. And they, they, just, they just looked second rate. They just they looked are. disinterested. Well, they are yeah. second rate. You're absolutely right. Seven and hog. Seven hog, of oh, course. Oh, we down to seven. Um, we lost our way there for a bit. I was worried that he was going to turn it round. Um, not. But what an odd choice to not pick Casemiro as well. It's just... What about Harry Maguire? <laughs> Get him in there. Get yeah. him on the plane. <laughs> um, I just... I, I, I thought it was... Man United were as poor as Man City were good because Man City didn't even have to be good. I will... It, to play Red Devil's advocate because for whatever reason that role seems to have fallen to me recently. Um, I don't think that there's anyone who shouldn't just be packing the box like a relegation team against City because City are like that much better than literally everyone else in the league. They are two leagues in their own. Do you know Agreed, what I mean? Like yeah. there, there is no one who can keep up with them. So everyone should just be doing control damage control. We were 2-0 up and then inept referee and kept us from the third goal and them going down to 10 men. So, you know. <laughs> that is true. But Man United didn't even commit to that. They didn't commit to anything. They scored three goals. Oh, come on. Once half their fans had left. Half their fans had <laughs> left <laughs> after like great. 12 minutes. 4-0 four, four at halftime. Beat the traffic. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I don't know. I just think there's better teams that are going to do worse against City than Manchester United did. I don't know that I hold this particular result against them. It was fun that um, Ronaldo was an unused substitute in the biggest game for this club. That was fun. That was fun. I enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's back. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. City are going to just fucking win it, right? Like, like, what are they on at 538? Let's let's bring that in here. 98% to make the Champions League, 71% to win the league. Everyone else is on 10 or less. It's Liverpool's wow. fault. It is. Liverpool, and to a lesser extent, and no one else will think this, but I do, Chelsea, who are the only two teams who have the talent and budget to have kept up with them, and neither of them at all did. Liverpool especially. Um has been a, a, a disaster. And that might be a good place to transition then to our Liverpool game. We'll go back to Saturday, October 1st. This one was at the 10 a.m. slash 15 p.m. slash 7 a.m. if you're on the west coast of the U.S. time kickoff. 
Uh, and that was Liverpool 3, Brickton 3, 1.6 to 1.6 on XG. So exactly a draw with admittedly a pretty good team in Brighton who are uh, underrated, even though they have now they are now potterless, um, rudderless and potterless. Are we worried about Liverpool? They were down 3-0, I think, right? They were 2-0 down within 17 minutes. It was it was looking like it could be an absolute disaster. I mean, I'd argue it is. And it frustrates me because now more and more as time passes, Palace only getting a draw against Liverpool looks like a worse and worse result. <laughs> and that's saying something. Oh, they they are, have just been awful. And, you know, how many times do we have to say, oh, they're going to turn the corner? Like, I get it. It's, it's not many games, but this is completely unknown levels of liverpool -ness. Um They played seven games, won two, drawn four, lost one. Um, you know, at least there's only one in the lost column, but that's that's awful. Like ninth, they're below mm. they're below Fulham, they're below Newcastle, um, then they're below the rest of the top five. They're they're eleven points granted with a game in hand off of Arsenal at the top, you know, and ten points off of um, City. That's why City's yeah. percentage of winning the league is so high because Liverpool have just done absolutely nothing. <laughs> Yeah, and that is too big of a gap. Like, that, straight up, that's too big of a gap to make up. Let's have the same narrative as last year. It's too much. <laughs> oh, wait. And then City just turned off for the second half of the season? Well, they're, they're going to be hoping that happens again because at the minute it just looks it looks ridiculous. Because the, the, what everyone was thinking is when Liverpool get some players back, uh, uh, Matip was back and um, Thiago was back, and the the thinking was, oh, that, that'll settle them back in. But the fact is they've... They've not looked great. Van Van Dyke looks really out of sorts. Well, how old is he? Did he fall off the age cliff potentially? No, I just think they've just been bad. You know, you need a certain level of protection if your midfield three is going to be Jordan Henderson, James Milner, and insert third other. Like you're not going to get protected because they're all absolute dinosaurs and awful. Yeah, and Van Dyke, I just looked it up, is 31 now, so that is potentially like not young enough to make up the difference for a lack of a midfield he's he's human more than superhuman at this point potentially i don't know it does it did just look like he didn't know when he should be when he should be stepping up he didn't he didn't go to the ball at the right time or the play it, it, he didn't hold the line properly it was all very strange from from van well all of them really i'm singling out van dyke just because he's been imperious previously you know he's been so incredible for him and i'm sure it will click back but I, I don't know how many times i can keep saying that before i, I accept that they're just gonna have a very bad season yeah the vibes are way off yeah way off and like they they don't have a good midfield yes that is probably the problem their main problem yes but they haven't really had a good midfield in recent seasons and like they haven't They've still managed to be one of the best teams in the world, slash one of the best teams in the history of the Prem a couple of seasons ago. Um, and now it just really seems like all the other pieces that were sort of propping them up are falling off. Is it just Mane being gone? Like, is that enough to be doing this? Or do you guys see something else happening here? Because I don't see anything. It just It's just weird. I don't know that you can say... I mean, Mane was obviously a brilliant player for Liverpool, but then you've got Diaz, who seems to have slotted in very well. I suppose we're still waiting for Jota to come back properly. I know he got he got about fifteen minutes, didn't he, on in, in this game? Um, Harvey Elliott hasn't quite kicked on. I I thought this might be his season. He's not quite kicked on to the degree that they might have hoped. And obviously, Nunes has been um, anonymous Shit. except for when he's been headbutting people. So you know, Firm Bobby's <laughs> been the only one who's having a lovely old time this season. Um, so I don't. I I genuinely don't know how to call it other than. You know, maybe we're waiting for another couple of players to click. Those players being Elliot, Jota, and Nunes. Maybe, it's, it's just maybe an we're adjustment. For them. They have to take a hit at some point on their front three. And uh, Sadio Mane is a, a higher quality and b a different style of player than Luis Diaz is. Diaz seems often to want to slow the play down a little bit more and, and try and beat a man and right. cut inside, as opposed to the more swashbuckling nature. I think anyway of Mane wanting to get in behind the same as Salah did. And when you have two players like that. You know, yeah. obviously stretches play a lot more and means it's open. Perhaps that's also why then Salah's been a lot less potent this year as well. Um, who knows? That could just be looking for a pattern here or whatever. But the simple fact mm. is that they, and, and Klopp has said this, they just simply haven't been good enough. And as much as that isn't a necessarily a tangible thing, we can all see that on the pitch and the results and why we're all saying it just doesn't feel right. Granted, it is comparing them to the very, very high standards that they've set over the last few years. 
pushing City, you know, have, have kept City from running away with the league um, over the last five seasons and made it seem like a lot worse. Um, or like the City are a lot more dominant, and we aren't a farmers league in 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 that kind of way. The same as like Liga and and the Bundesliga is, but they need to fix it and they need to fix it rapidly. Really, well, do you reckon there's any play at all in the in the fact that they might just be burnt out? Because other than Diaz and Nunes, who obviously hasn't really featured, you're looking at a, a very similar team that they've had a long time now. And Klopp, when Klopp came to the league. It was all this heavy metal football, gag and press, mm. and people were saying that they're gonna, they're not gonna be able to keep it up. But they, but they did. I think it's you know, only they, the, they, they, I think it's only the midfield three that that can't yeah. do it. That that midfield three is just is awful. How can you how can you say that? Tiago is injured all the time. He he cannot last a yeah. run of more than two three games. James Milner is an absolute liability who should have received a ridiculously higher amount of red cards than he actually has somehow. Because <laughs> any time he gets subbed on as fullback, he's making at least five or six bad fouls before he actually gets booked. Henderson, you know, obviously he has that personality and and link in there but he's just not and it is not it and especially when you combine the three um the, mm. the problem is like Thiago is great when he's there however he's just never there um so I don't want to be dismissive of his talent because he's clearly a very talented player and and his passing is very good and especially in a quick way um but when you have that midfield three and you're going to play in a certain way that's going to expose areas that need to be covered and they aren't getting covered, e.g. the easy target of, oh, Trent can't defend, um, hmm. which simply isn't true. Um, although in this game, there was a lot of one-on-ones and headers out that were really bad. Um, so it's maybe not the best example, um, <laughs> but like they need players to cover that. He chooses yeah, not to defend. Um, <laughs> if they get Jude Bellingham, brilliant. But the problem is, Every fucker's coming in for Jude Bellingham and he's got a release clause of something stupid like 120 million. So see what happens. Yeah, and that's that's, you know, chump change for the league at this point. The uh the English Super League, if you will. Um I don't know. I think maybe they'll get better when Jota is playing more. Maybe I'm grasping at straws there. But I also don't think it particularly matters if they do get better, Ian, um, to go back to your question, because like it, it, it's too little too late at this point for the league um they could still make you know a cup run champions league or fa cup or something like that but i don't know that anybody other than north london team that shall not be named can at all keep make a case against city this particular year do you see them like making any sort of manager move take this as an opportunity to be like Klopp, we had a good run thank you or is he just there no he just signed a new contract no way that's too expensive they fire managers on new contracts all the time. That's not necessarily a thing. I not can't Liverpool. see Liverpool. I can't see Liverpool do it. Yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. Fair I enough. just can't see Liverpool doing that. They've it had just, Klopp for what six yeah. or seven years now. Before that, it was yeah, it it's was, been a long time. Uh, Rogers for a good four years, and and you know Klopp delivered them the Premier League. So it, he's got credit in the bank. It would take something unbelievable it's too much of an upheaval to i think it's too much of an upheaval yeah. and he's intrinsically into that team that it would be such an upheaval and a potentially expensive exercise in so many ways in which they don't want to spend money and there's not a sniff of player upset no 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 none, none whatsoever that is off the table for the time being it would take another six or seven games where they're getting Five or six okay. points for it to even be considered. Like you know, they'd have to be, I think, bottom half of the table after half of the season for it to even be. Yeah, let's say that they hit Christmas and it's then they're still in ninth. Then are they looking at Klopp or are you like, mm. nah, that dude's safe? I, well, I still think he'd be safe, but I think other people would be talking about it. <laughs> like the media would yeah, suddenly okay. start talking about it. I think, but I, I, I think, yeah, like I say, I think it'd have to. I think maybe Champions League would have to be sort of almost mathematically out of the question or something like that. It'd have to be something crazy, I think. I agree with you. But, you know, someone's got to ask the questions. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, from one Merseyside team to the other, we'll go to Everton 2, Southampton 1, Everton 1.7 to Southampton's 2.3. Everton getting away with a win here, but looking decent-ish since, uh, you know, they were in their very, very bad form. Three draws and two wins in their last five uh, up to 11th place, not particularly relegation worthy. Um, they are still 18% on 538, but have Everton turned it around 
And uh, short answers, please, Mr. Stimson. <laughs> short answers, because no one cares. Um, yeah, I think Everton, but based on what we've seen of other teams this season, no, they Everton haven't. look like they might be okay. But Chuck says no. So. <laughs> okay, Chuck, care to elaborate? You have a, you came in pretty strong there with a no, they haven't. No, they're still shit. They're still shit, but relegation shit. Uh, yeah, could be. There's a lot of there's a lot of upturning that's going to happen from where teams are now. So I don't think league position means much when uh, the gap between eleventh and eighteenth is four points. Wow. Okay, that is very yeah. That's true. That and, ga- and teams down there have games in hand. Yeah, man. From Europe to relegation is is a five point gap. Yeah, it's nothing. It's it's absolutely that's mental. The way everyone's beating everyone again. So that's a no on Everton turning it around. It sounds like very good. Um, I just don't. I just don't want to acknowledge it. So <laughs> if I can stay in denial and still maintain that Lampard shit and Everton are shit, then, oh, yeah, you know. still might be. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Well, speaking of things that Chuck won't want to acknowledge, I suppose we should get to the Mop Derby. This weekend, we had Crystal Palace 1, Chelsea 2, Crystal Palace 0.7 to Chelsea's 1.4. Chuck, I can only assume that you're very angry about the Thiago Silva lack of a red card. I will clear the path and let you kind of go off a bit on that. So let's hear the Palace side of this one. How are we feeling? Other than, you know, bad. Um, hope he gets hit by a bus. <laughs> okay. All right. So feeling reasonable. Good, good, good. Love to see that. Uh, I take it you think it was a red? Yes. Okay. Um, any other thoughts on Palace in this match? It's like pulling teeth. Nope. <laughs> Nothing else. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Nothing else. Um, from the Chelsea side of it, I guess. Ian, actually, Ian, do you want to say anything about Palace in uh, in lieu of Chuck having thoughts? <laughs> uh, well, it, it, it is hard to... It is one of those where the scoreline feels like it doesn't... Well, it does tell the story, I guess, doesn't it? Because obviously Silva gets the assist for, for the goal and um, he... I don't think he should have been on the field. I think that was a, a pretty appalling decision, I think. Um, it, I also think from a player of his age, he should know better than to be grabbing out at the ball like that. I mean, if... if, if oh, it, he knew exactly what he was doing. Are you kidding me? That was like perfectly shit house like deliberate <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that's, exactly that, that, was that, was. A, that was a horrific risk to take it is it, the game was you know nowhere near over so it sort of it was yeah it was it was very iffy and he, he handballs it twice he, he and i it, it was i wasn't it he was away if that hadn't have happened and it, it's it's it, it's real shit it's because it, it's so deliberate it's real shit and so it's it, unbelievably shit house like yeah. it's shit house to the extreme it's not shit house really, it's uh... cheating there's a difference between shit house and just fucking cheating <laughs> it's just it's just fucking cheating and then he goes and assists five minutes later in also in a move that injures our right back and he has to go off it's it's absolutely just goes to show again the sheer levels of incompetence in the officiating of the sport that's it. What's the point? I, I I've, I've been so angry for days, but now I just I just so dejected and over it because it's just like people cheat their way into the top everywhere in life. That's what we get everywhere, and then you see it just like that. Blatant, no intent on doing anything other than cheating, and he just gets to carry on and do whatever. So great, cool. Anything else that happens, whatever. Okay. <laughs> That's bleak. That is bleak. Um, the Chelsea side of it, then, a little less bleak. Potter's first game in, in charge in the league, so that was good. They looked threatening. They they were creating stuff. Um, a bit open at the back, which you don't love to see, but, you know, we give them some grace period there as a, as a team in transition. Um, not the crazy MMWMMW, some combination of those two letters, formation that we saw in the Champions League. Uh, with Sterling potentially at wing back the other time. Um, remains to be seen what will happen in our next Champions League match, which I believe is in two days. But yeah, they looked they looked threatening, which is really all you can ask for a new manager. Um, got the win. Uh, Pulisic coming off the bench, getting a return. Not a goal, but, you know, got an assist. Uh, so my one week punt in my FPL team paid off. Um <laughs> Oh, and, and obviously Gallagher scoring on his return to Selhurst. No celebration. Uh, very respectful. Um, but what a curling shot. That was quite nice to see. It was a great uh, goal. And, and like yeah. I said, 
Yeah, nice goal. And from the Chelsea perspective, like we don't really have much to play for this season. Um, so fun, exciting goals. And uh, that's all you can really want at this point. And so, you know, Potter, going good. Yeah, I thought that Kepa kept you in it a couple of times, though, um, which is a sentence that seems bizarre to say. I, I think that, you know, you, it wasn't a performance without holes for Chelsea. Um, it, but, but Potter, you know, might... I think, you know, we've said a lot that he's a very good manager, so he, he might uh, be able to iron out defensive frailties. And if Aubameyang hits well as oh, well, right. he might... He might what, I was going to say he might luck into a, a good situation. That's harsh because he's a good manager and Chelsea are a good team. But, you know, he obviously wasn't involved in the transfer dealings and, and stuff. And if Aubameyang can do old Aubameyang things... That was a nice goal. I, w- I will say uh, I was not excited for Aubameyang. I'm trying to be fair and give him a chance, but I think it was a bad move. Um, and I don't mean like Koulibaly was a bad move because we overpaid and gave him too long of a contract. I think Aubameyang was a bad move for right now. Koulibaly is amazing for this season, and so we're just overpaying and overextending. But like, is but a you, good pickup. You don't care about money, so it doesn't. Right, and it's not my money, and Todd Bowley doesn't care about money either, apparently. Yeah. Um, but I think Aubameyang was probably a bad pickup. But if he can like be that fox in the box and just have everything happening around him, and all he has to do is put the chances away, um, he took that chance really well. So I'm trying to be patient and give him a chance and see how he works under. Uh, hold on, let me get this right. Gray Hamey Potter. Did I do that right? I think I did that right. The, the way you pronounce Graham is so strange. Gray Graham. Gray Hayam Potter. Yeah. Um, or Edmure Tully, if you're a Thrones fan. Um, let's move on <laughs> from here to the uh, one of the W Darbies this weekend, I guess. West Ham. Uh, two Wolves won, 1, 1.0 to 0. 0.7. Any thoughts on West Ham Wolves? Is there anything doing with either of those teams? Fired their manager. Yeah, it took a it took a West Ham two 0 to um, destroy Bruno Large's chances of, after an uh, international on. break when there was a Mental. load of postponements when you were planning on getting rid of him at the end of last year apparently because of a full breakdown in communication between him and the team. But, like, but this was the result that did it. I sure. mean, I suppose it sure. doesn't really matter when you know you're just gonna pick your Portuguese name out of the hat and then that'll be it. You know, <laughs> it's who does George Mendes say that you're gonna you're gonna hire next and away you go. Yeah, so. Whatever, Wolves are shit. Happy for West Ham getting a, a win. Is that their first win? Uh, no, they have two wins. So they got a win at some other point. Doubled their wins. Um, <laughs> they won against Villa on August 28th. <laughs> Who hasn't oh won God. against Villa? Uh, Southampton. Southampton. They had Leeds this week. There we go. Dirty Leeds. Ten men, dirty, dirty Leeds. Dirty Leeds. And then Brentford didn't beat Bournemouth. There we go. Is that all the... Brentford didn't beat Bournemouth. Uh, Newcastle 4 on Fulham, 3.5 to 0.4. That's quite a a beat down. I didn't see that one. Anything to mention there? There was a Fulham sending off, so... Eight eight minutes? Yeah, really early. So that was a done deal Uh, real quick. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. That'll do it. And Almiron is in rare form uh, (laughs) with an absolutely beautiful volley um, that dipped... Just up and down so nicely. It was the technique on it was beautiful. Form. So. <laughs> For what? Scored in one fixture out of the last five. Form. That is form for no, him. He's, he's had more than that because he had the, he had the goals that uh, huh? triggered. The, he, didn't he score against Man City yeah. in the Grealish? Uh, yeah. Six six games ago. Was that six games ago? Fucking yeah. Up. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Look, it, yeah. Ian, we'll cut you a break because you've had COVID and been off work form. for about a month. Um, so you have no sense of time. That's fine. You're, you're back in your lockdown. Don't have a go at me for form. He's been doing brilliant for me in fan tracks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so he's clearly been making some crucial passes. Um, <laughs> I think that's all the games. We went kind of out of order, but I think we talked about everybody. Uh, what's up with Leicester? Someone give me an update on Leicester. Losing 4-0. <laughs> no, Leicester are winning. Sorry, you just defaulted oh, there. Sorry, you defaulted to Leicester losing. Sorry, I did. You're yeah. absolutely right. Enfo yeah. losing 4 0, which puts Forest bottom of the league. And Leicester 19th. <laughs> Second bottom. <laughs> Second bottom on goal difference. <laughs> Moved as many as one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Leicester are bad. Well, yeah, but you say that, but then, you know, Leicester are then one win away from like 14th, 15th. <laughs> so it's just like mad. 
Yeah, we are not yet at the point where like XG particularly tells us anything. It is starting to tell us some things about some teams, but it's unclear which of those are the truth and which of those are noise. Or even um, really that the table means anything, you know? Yeah, exactly. Those two kind of go hand in hand, really. Uh, sample size. Yeah, exactly. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> it's still <laughs> hilarious that that Leicester are that bad for now. Um, and ha- I have have hope, Chuck. I think Palace will turn it around. Um, especially with the run of fi- for- fixtures that they have coming up now. Don't you fucking patronize me. It's not patronizing. God, we did say that on the first day of the season. We're like, hey, you just got to get to October and then we'll see where you're at. Like, that's when the season really starts is October for you. So we've made it to October and now the season can start. Yay. I think. I don't know. <laughs> it's got to be quiz time. Got to be quiz time. All right. Let me, uh, let me pull up my tabs. Quiz time. Pull up a tab about the quiz. This quiz has numbers. Also, things that are not just numbers. It's a quiz. Guess the quiz. Time for quiz. I have my tab ready to go. That definitely didn't require Ian to cut out a bunch of silence as I sorted myself out. I won't close it early. Uh, The trilogy is prices right. Last week we were talking about transfer prices. This week... We are talking about stadium capacities. <laughs> the size of stadiums in the Premier League in 2022-2023. By club, there are 20 teams in the league, as you might imagine. Uh, I'm going to alternate letting you pick a number from 1 to 20, and then we will play prices Right Rules to see who gets it correct. This week, Ian, I will have you saying your answers out loud, and Chuck, I will be having you writing your answers down. And showing them to the camera. I don't have a pen and paper. If you need a second to get something to write with. (laughs) Can we just just make Ian do it? All right, Ian, you will be writing your answers down (laughs) once again. And Chuck, you will be saying your answers out loud. He's going to write them down anyway. (laughs) (laughs) It's not a bluffer. He can't cheat. And it is still the same rules, closest without going over. So let's say, for example, the stadium has a capacity of 54,286. And you say 54,287. You lose, even though you were only off by one. Um, and let's start with Chuck. Give me a number from one to twenty. Seven. Seven. One, two, three, four. I knew five, it was going to be league seven. table. The nope seventh largest stadium Ooh. in the Premier League is St James's Park, home of Newcastle United in mm-hmm. the city of Newcastle. Mm-hmm. Uh, curiously enough, I will give you a few seconds to think about the size of St James. Ian, I need you to write your answer down while Chuck is thinking, please. Chuck. How large is St. James's Park? 52,000. 52,000. Chuck says 52,000 for St. James. Ian, can you hold your answer up to the camera? 55,000. 55,000. Drum roll, please. Point goes to Chuck. 52,305. Very nicely done, Chuck. What the fuck? 305 away. 305 away. Oh. Yes. Did you know that, or was that just like the luckiest guess? No, I knew it was about 52,000. <laughs> Fuck it. There hell. you go. Give or take. Uh, Ian, give me a number from 1 to 20, and don't say 7. 13. The problem is now 13. we know one, they're in two, size yeah. order. <laughs> 13 takes us to the King Power Stadium, home of Leicester City Football Club, the Foxes in the city of Leicester, I believe. I'm going to be guessing where the cities are from here on out. Uh <laughs> I hope there's a city named Leicester and that's where the stadium is. I'm assuming going off of the name. The team is called Leicester um, City. So, you know. Sure, but like, where is Aston Villa? Maybe in Middlesbrough. Aston. I don't know. I'm going to guess later. <laughs> anyway, Leicester, King Power Birmingham. Stadium. Ian, write a number down. Um, Chuck, think about it. 33,000. Chuck says 33,000 for the King Power Stadium. Mr. Stimson. 30,000. 30,000. Drum roll, please. Brrr. Point goes to Ian. Oh, no. The King Power Stadium is 32,262. Okay. So, Ian was closest to Damn, that point. I nearly over. went 32. Okay. <laughs> that would have been amazing. Yeah, you got to just guess the twos, apparently. <laughs> 52, 32. Yeah, pretty much. Um, we'll do a best of seven. So, uh, Chuck, give me another number. Um, well, I can just do 20th and say <laughs> that it's Bournemouth. Bournemouth. <laughs> or I could do 19th and say it's Brentford. Either one of those would be perfectly acceptable, or a different number if you want a different number. I'll go... Four. Four. <laughs> one, two, three, four. That is 
West Ham United playing at the London Stadium in the city of London. That one I know. Um, The name helped. So... (laughs) It's not actually technically in the city of London. Yeah. (laughs) That's true. Well, then I'm wrong. It is not in the city of London. It is the greater London metropolitan area. (laughs) Um, Ian, do you have an answer written down? Yep. Okay, Chuck, how large is the London Stadium? I'm suspicious of how precise this answer is, I will say. 60,000. Oh. 60,000. That's what I've said. Oh. Oh, my. It is... Both of you are exactly correct. I wish I could give one of you a bonus point. Why not? I'll give both of you a bonus <laughs> point. It is exactly 60,000. Did you know it was 60,000? I genuinely knew it was 60,000. Oh, I didn't know. That was just a Hey. Guess. There you go. So that is a tie on that one. So that does not help us decide. Mr. Stimson, go ahead and pick the next number. I will say um, I'll go 20th. The Bournemouth. 20th. Bournemouth. AFC Bournemouth playing at the Vitality Stadium in the city of Bournemouth. Is that a place? Unclear. Town. <laughs> yes. town. There we go. In the town of Bournemouth. Um, Chuck, take yeah. a second to think. Ian, take a second to write. And whenever you are ready, Chuck, give me your number for the size of the Vitality Stadium uh, in the town of Bournemouth. Sure. Uh, 11,500. 11,500, Chuck Ooh. says. Wow, Mr. Stimson, what did you say? I know it's small. I've got 14,000. 14,000. No point to anybody. You're oh. both over. It oh. is 11,307. Oh, oh, my God. I wasn't sure if it was 11 or 11,5. I should have gone so down. close. Um, I think we'll play the best of to first to five. Just as a way to like cut this <laughs> off in case you both keep missing points or both keep getting the same points. Which means that it is Chuck's turn to pick a stadium. Chuck, number from 1 to 20. Uh, let's go for 12. 12. 1, Villa 2, Park? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No. 12 is the St. Mary's Stadium in Southampton in the city of Southampton. I'm assuming is a city and I'm seeing smiles Good and Lord. nods. So yeah. <laughs> Crushing this game, my side of it. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, St. Mary's. How big many Ooh. seats butts fit inside? See, this is where Ian writing it down helps. Cheating. Um, how? Wait, 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 wait. Time out. How does that at all help him? <laughs> because you're ranking them by number of seats. He knows which ones were which oh, answers and has them written see, down. This is where... And can then work you, it out. This is where... No, see, he's not that uh, yep. strategic. Right. <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Bless his little Hufflepuff heart. He would never think to try to <laughs> suss out answers like that. I Only you and that. I, the Slytherins in the group, mm. are like, well, why aren't you being more strategic? Yeah, I had not, not thought about that at all. Uh, so, um, St. Mary's Stadium. Uh, 32,500. 32,500. 35,000. 35,000. Drum roll. Brrr. Both of you are over. Oh. Chuck, you were over by very little. Start guessing down a little bit, because it was 32,384. You were off by 116 oh, seats. Oh, that is close. <laughs> that is awfully uh. close. I feel bad that the rules are without going over, but also Price is Right is a great game. So, I don't know. Chuck, we, you, we can switch to you writing your answers down if you prefer, if you think nah, that Ian no, is no, no, some no, sort it's of fine. I'll here. just get it wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, whose turn is it to pick a number? I believe it is uh, me. I'll Ian's go turn. eight. Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is Villa Park. That is Villa Park at Aston Villa, who play in the city of Birmingham. Yeah, Question close mark? enough. The greater close metropolitan okay, area it. of Birmingham, I would say. Okay. Don't Love write it. in Villa um, fans. That I knew that is a huge win for me. Honestly, I'm very proud of myself at the moment. Mm. Uh, how big is Villa Park? Thirty-seven. Thousand, not Villa Park, not 37,000. Ian, what have you said? 40,000. 40,000. Point goes to Mr. Stimson. Oh. The Villa Park is 42,657. What even are the scores? What? Yeah, what the scores uh, on the draws? Ian's on four. Chuck, you are on three. Ian, your next okay. correct point gets you the win. Chuck, you need two here. Two. <laughs> two. Two. Takes us to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, a home of Tottenham Hotspur in North London. Uh, give you a chance to think, Ian, once you've written it down, give me a thumbs up, and Chuck can say his answer aloud. At home, if you are playing along, write us in, let us know how it's going. Hopefully, you better than this. 
<laughs> that was so local radio. <laughs> Um, all right. It seems like Ian has his answer. So Chuck, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, how many seats? It's not much higher than West Ham. Six one seven five zero. Oh. <laughs> 61, 61,750. Mr. Stimson, what is your guess? 65,000. 65,000. <laughs> It goes to the tiebreaker. No. That is Chuck's <laughs> point. It is 4-4. Next question wins. Tottenham Hotspur, 62,850. So you are off by about 1,000. I would have gone 62. But then I dropped there you go. Um, and so I will pick the last one. You might guess as to what it is. If this is a tiebreaker and it's for the win, it is the one, the only Stamford Bridge, home of Chelsea Football Club, two-time European champions. Uh, only, only team from London to do that in case you were wondering. So take a second, take a couple seconds, think about the size of Stamford Bridge. It's old, isn't it? Stamford Bridge. It's old and it's smaller than it should be. Yeah. It is not as big just as the give, other big yeah. six clubs. Just give clubs. clues. Just give him clues. It's fine. I've got an answer. I'm giving an answer. you the same clues, Chuck. You can also hear my voice. <laughs> I don't need them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, fair enough, fair enough. All right, big words. What do you got, Chuck? Let's give us a guess then. I know it's in the 40s. It's it's not over 50,000. I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm it's... I'm in the 40s. <laughs> I don't know if it's high 40s or if it's low 40s. I'm feeling I'm going to go 46,000. 46,000, says Chuck. Mr. Stimson, what was your guess? 45,000. 45,000. Neither of you gets the point. Can you guys fucking <laughs> close this out, please? Nice. 40,343. So barely into the 40s. Oh, small, is Exactly 40,000 would have been pretty close. Small club, tiny club. <laughs> um, I'm going to continue to choose arbitrarily. We'll go to the biggest one as the tiebreaker, and that is Old Trafford, Manchester United in the city of Manchester. Ha- the biggest stadium in England, I believe the like fifth biggest stadium in Europe, something like that. It's Wembley. way up there. Wembley is bigger. Home club of, uh, stadium is must be what I'm thinking of then. Yes. All right. Chuck, how big is Old Trafford? Uh, it's like 78,000. 78,000. Mr. Stimson, what was your guess? 72,000. 72,000. Point goes to Ian and the win this week. It is 74,310. Very nicely done, Mr. Stimson. I will say very nicely, generously so. (laughs) That was nicely done. What are you talking about? That was a saga. Yes, it took, that took longer than I thought it would. Uh, That also puts us on 4 4 for the season, exactly level. Very good race so far this season. You guys have just been trading weeks, basically. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. Next week, we will conclude the Price is Right trilogy with some other as-yet-chosen category with numbers in it. Marvelously inadequate together. Um, Saturday, (laughs) 8th of October, Bournemouth against Leicester. Why would... Why? Oh, it's not on telly. Thank God. Um, (laughs) Chelsea against Wolves, Man City, Southampton, Newcastle, Brentford, Brighton, Spurs... (gasps) I don't need a breath, really. Uh, Sunday, we got Palace against Dirty, Dirty, Dirty Leeds. Uh, West Ham against Fulham. Arsenal, Liverpool, Everton, Manchester United and Nottingham Forest, Aston Villa. Nottingham Forest making another appearance on Monday, Monday, Monday night football. football. With Steve Cooper? Question mark? Question mark. Probably not. Uh, that, yeah, that's it. Isn't it? That's what we do. Look, it's. I'm not gonna lie. I couldn't be asked. Um, <laughs> I, I fucking hate Chelsea. Um, say bye, Oscar. Bye. <laughs> uh, say goodbye, Ian, supporter of the only blue team I recognise. Bye, mate. And thanks to our Patreon producers, Nate Whitam, hundred points, nearly. Mark Daff and Sam Danby, Jeff Pe- Andy Pepper, and Tom Tully. Bye. Oh, and uh, check out Wrexham if you don't know about the history of hooliganism. That was a really good episode last week. Little plug. Oh, yeah, because they need the help. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, he's got to pay for Deadpool 3, all right?